Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. And today we're going to talk about the difference between a public key and a Bitcoin address. And the reason for this tutorial is because a lot of the time people use these terms interchangeably. And in fact, I used to as well. But when I dug a little bit deeper, I found that these are actually slightly different things. And I think it's a good thing to know what, how they're different and why there's a reason, what the reason is for them to be different. All right, so let's have a look. So here's our diagrams up to now. Uh, we've got our private key, which generates the public key. The private key is used to create the message. And, the, and then to get the message, they create the signature. And then the public key, message, and signature all go into the verification function to get a yes, no answer. And so what is a Bitcoin address? Well, let's restructure this diagram or move this diagram a little bit to the left. So the same diagram, I just move it to the left so that we have some space on the right. And what a Bitcoin address is, it's a it is derived from the public key and it's derived by just applying simply applying the SHA-256 hash function as we know the hash function is uh, deterministic there's a very low chance of any kind of collisions so it's pretty much like if you have the public key you will always get you will definitely always get the same address from the public key but because the collisions are so rare and so unlikely it's very unlikely that you will get a, um, you know, two different public keys will generate the same address. Very, very, very unlikely. And so therefore, we again, as all as as many times in this uh, course, we are leveraging uh, the SHA-256 hash function here. And so what is the address for? Well, the address is where you can ask people to send you money as just with the public key. It's something that you, sh you don't have to keep private. So the private key, you definitely don't want to ever share with anybody. That's something that is completely yours. As soon as somebody knows your private key, they can take away everything, all, all the money that you have, all the Bitcoins that you have. And so that has to be kept safe. Uh, whereas public key is not the same thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be kept safe. And the address, it doesn't have to be kept safe as well. That, in fact, that's what you need to tell people for them to send you money, uh, Bitcoin. The interesting thing is that people can also send you Bitcoin straight to your public key as well. So you can give them either. You can give them the public key or the address. Uh, the wallets will handle it either way. They can send you money one way or the other. But why? So why? What's the point of the address? The, the reason is we want to actually try and keep the public key uh, also uh, safe or not exactly uh, private and protected all the time we want to keep the public key we don't want, we don't want to expose it too often we definitely will have to expose the public key when uh, we send money to someone when we send bitcoin to someone else because without the public key they cannot run the verification function they cannot confirm that um, the transaction is valid so you will have to expose the public key when you send money but if we can avoid exposing it when we receive money we should do that uh, and that's why we use the address. And so the question is, why should we avoid um, exposing the public key when we can? Well, the reason for that is over here. It's in this link between the private key and the public key. So as we know, as we've discussed, there's no way to generate, to identify what the private key is or find out the private key knowing the public key. Uh, and that's like a huge foundational uh, layer of, of or underpinning concepts of all of this. And why is that? Well, because... The way it's generated is through an elliptic function. Now, we're not going to go into elliptic functions here. It's a very technical topic. Um, it's kind of like digging into the uh, nitty gritty or how the SHA-256 works. It's not a hash function. It's an elliptic function, but that's how they're connected. So from a private key, elliptic function gives you the public key. And um, the reason for this additional protection that we're trying to create here, we're using the SHA-256 function, is because... If at some point this is somehow reverse engineered, if there is like a flaw in uh, the elliptic function that is uncovered or something else that, that eventually one day somehow somebody finds a way to go from public key to private key, um, well, by if you are giving everybody your public key for all of your transactions, then very quickly somebody can get to your private key. But if you're protecting it with additional layer of protection, which is the SHA-256, uh, with the hashing algorithm, then even if this happens, if somebody somehow reverse engineers this, then you will have that additional layer of protection uh, because people will only have your address. They won't have, they won't be able to get to the public key that quickly uh, unless, you know, unless you've sent them money. But if they've been sending you money, they won't be able to get to it because there's this layer of protection. And therefore, um, 
it will take it will take some time for the Bitcoin um, community to fix this problem, fix this bug, and replace uh, the elliptic function or fix how it's calculated. So fix this problem that there's cal there's a vulnerability here. So they they'll it'll take some some time to fix that vulnerability, and you want to be protected as much as you can during the duration of that vulnerability. So there we go. That's uh, the reason why the, we use addresses rather than public keys. That's why we uh, apply an additional hash or additional SHA-256 to our public key to get the address. This is how it all works. Um, and uh, to finish off, let's have a look at what we need to do with the address for somebody to send money. So how does this, how does this actually happen, this part here? Well, let's uh, duplicate this. This is our uh, diagram. I've put in like sample uh, dummy keys in there. And here's another diagram, so another person. So let's say that's me, Kirill, that's Adlan. And if Adlan wants to send me money, I have to give him my uh, address and he will put it in to the transaction. So this message here is actually, that's how in when we are actually transacting with each other rather than just encrypting messages, that's where the transaction actually goes. And then this transaction, once it's all encrypted like that, it will go to the, it'll go to the, um, uh, blockchain so this, it'll go into a block along with this uh, public key that he has so together they'll go into a block and then anybody can and the signature so this transaction the signature and the and the public key will go into a block and then anybody can go ahead and verify or the nodes can verify that it is a valid transaction so that's how it happens uh, basically I need to give him that address and he will include it in the transaction so there we go that's uh, how uh, what's the difference is between an address and a public key. And if you'd like to learn a bit more, uh, where I learned uh, about this stuff is a um, subreddit, or is, it's like a, it's like a, so like a, <laughs> I don't use Reddit that much. It's like a, a, a response on Reddit uh, to a question, what's the difference between the public and uh, pr uh, public address? Very, very detailed response by HK Support. Uh, link as always will be in the notes for the course if you would like to have a look and find out a bit more detail on that. And on that note, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, enjoy blockchains.